lecture videos or let me say lecture series so far we've, we've been considering linear systems of differential equations these differential equations are mostly first order differential equations if we have a higher order we can reduce it to some systems of first order differential equations we also classify the differential equations of either it is homogeneous or non-homogeneous if it's homogeneous it is written as this equation if it's non-homogeneous we have the source term as the g we also said that if it's homogeneous you can look at real and distinct repeated complex roots these roots are called eigenvalues and to find a solution you must write the corresponding eigenvectors to get a solution as the eigenvector, some arbitrary constant, and whatever solutions you have. In this video, we are going to look at the non-homogeneous case. If it's non-homogeneous, we have established some methods we have to use. Method of undetermined coefficients, I call it MOU, and then variation of parameters, VOP. With this section, I'm going to consider just the MOU. I'm um, sorry to say this might be a, a, a bit long lecture video because of how involving this may be. So you pardon me with that. So that leads us to solving non-homogeneous linear system. That is a using the matrix algebra. Now we don't have to forget the rules we had when we had to solve um, MOU. I can I can skip this line here. So let's consider the method of undetermined coefficient. If I was in a higher differential equation, what do I do? I first have to find the complementary solution YC. When I'm done, I have to find a particular solution YP. And the checklist is that my YP should not be in the solution of YC. There's a particular solution. There's a complementary solution. Or someone would say the homogeneous solution. When you set the entire differential equation to zero. And that's where you have the source term attached to it. Then when I'm done, I can find my general solution as the combination of YC and YP. But you know before you find the general solution, you would have done a differentiation of the YP to the highest order and then you substitute you compare coefficients you for, I hope you remember these techniques or these steps that's the same thing we are going to do under systems we follow the same procedure just that now as a system of equation so I want to go through my slides here uh, to make it easier for us to understand before I take an example okay so let's look at table one. Now we want to know how these guess functions are obtained. How do I obtain these guess functions? In order to have these guess functions for MOU, there are some special cases of our GT. The GT can be a polynomial. It can be an exponential function. It can also be a cos and then sine function. Any of these three things or linear combinations of these cases, you are good to go. So let me take examples from the table. Assuming my guess function, so assuming my source function g is of the form 1, 1, what would be the yp? Now, this is how I will take the guess or the YP. Assuming I have just this point to consider, you know your YP is a copy of your YC. And there is a constant polynomial, it means I'm going to have an A. Now, because it's a system, it means I have two A's. This is also a, um, a, a G2 on its own. I'll have under A. So I'll simply write this as some a1 and a2 
this would be my yp in the second example so this is a polynomial case if i have g as negative 1 2 and then t realize that this is the same as writing as negative t and then 2t if i'm taking this alone my guess function would have been reducing the order it would have been a t plus b in the same way if i'm taking this it would have still been a t plus b but because it's a system it means i'm going to get some a big a times t times plus the big b and this is going to be a1 a2 taking the t and then b1 b2 So I'm showing a smart way of getting the guess functions. This is to a polynomial. If I have a trig function, it's a 3, 2, exponential 3t. If I take this as 1, I have 3e, 3t, and I have 2e, 3t. If I'm considering just this aspect of the gt, realize that your guess function would have been some a, e, 3t. So because it's two terms, it means I have a1, a2. So I'm adding this one to it. Exponential 3t. This will simply be my guess function. The last one, if I'm taking a cos, say 2, 3, cos t. Again, this is the same as 2 cos t. 3 cos t. If I'm considering just this one, I would have said my gt is a copy. So that would be some a. Don't forget if it's a cos, we add what the sine function b sine t. So because there are two, it means I'll have this as some a1, a2 taking the cos part plus the b1, b2 taking the sine part. So if this was a 3 function let's say there's a negative one here i would have add i would have said a1 a2 a3 and then b1 b2 b3 this would have been the simple guess functions and so you don't be scared if you are solving systems of equations with the method of undetermined coefficient on that note let's take a quick example here let me move to the next sheet we want to find a solution to a system given us. I want to change the notations here. Let's say 1y prime equal to x1 plus 2, x2 plus 3t. And then x2 prime is equal to 2x1 plus x2 plus 2. So it means I'm just changing my x to be x1 and then y to be x2. That's because throughout the videos, I'm using x1 and x2, so not to confuse anyone. I would like to extend my right up here since I wouldn't be in need of the slides. Let's see what happens. Now, this is a system. So, one, what do I do? I write my matrix form. The matrix form for this is some x1 prime, x2 prime is equal to the coefficient 1, 2, 2, 1, plus, no, multiplying, sorry. This would have been multiplying the unknowns x1, x2, plus the source term. In this case, there's a source term here, which is these two guys. It's not equal to zero. They're the ones without the unknown functions. Two. Now, because it is non-homogeneous, what do we do? We have to solve for the homogeneous solution. It means I'm having some x prime minus a x equal to zero. I'm assuming the source term here is zero. Before you go into solving homogeneous, what do you do? You have to find the eigenvalues or the root, and that is giving us a minus lambda i is equal to zero. So it means my concentration is just on the A. That is 1 minus lambda 2. 2 here, 1 minus lambda equal to 0. If you should expand this, 
we are going to get we are going to get the hygiene values to be double one minus lambda all square minus four and the hygiene values will be three and then negative one any way you position this you are good to go so that is my hygiene values the fourth thing to do is after finding hygiene values you know we have to find hygiene vectors for these are matrices so I'll find the two hygiene vectors so I'll first take when lambda is equal to 3 and when lambda is equal to negative 1 if it's 3 I'm going to have negative 2 2 2 um, negative 2 some v1 v2 equal to some 0 0 I'm sure by now you have been able to solve hygiene vectors so I'll go ahead and just write the final answer if I'm taking negative 1 I'm going to get 2 2 2 2 some v1 v2 is equal to 0 0 and for here the hygiene vectors for at lambda equal to 3 we are supposed to get let me see what I worked out here. You are going to get V1 to be 1, 1. And at negative 1, your V2 is going to be negative 1, 1. You can confirm or verify that. So that is my eigen value. Sorry, my eigen vectors. So I can write the general solution for the homogeneous part so i'm going to say x c complementary solution some c1 v1 that plus c2 v2 that and there's the same as c1 1 1 e negative e3 t plus c2 the eigenvector e2 E negative t this is my complementary solution as simple as that these are real and distinct the roots here is really distinct so you don't forget that okay if it's a complex root then you know how to write a solution if it's repeated you know how to write a solution right. so the sixth step now to find my particular solution it says it's a copy of the gt the question is, what is my gt but gt is the same as 3t and then 2 and what is my guess function if i'm considering you realize that there's a polynomial there's also a polynomial but there's of degree zero this degree one so i take the highest degree which is on this one if i'm writing just a yp for such i'm going to say this a t plus b and so because i have two values i have two of this my gt is going to be some a1 a2 times a t so it means a will break down to what a1 a2 and then b takes b1 b2 and b breaks down to this so we, I'm taking the highest degree polynomial to write my GT. Now let's look at a checklist. Do you see YP in any form of the complementary solution? So it means we are comparing we are comparing this to that. Do you see anything of that form? The answer is big no. So it means our guess solution is good to use. Now what do we do? So the next step, forget about the labeling of the steps. It's just to help you know what you are doing at this stage. What do we do? We have to now differentiate and substitute. So we differentiate uh, yp, in this case xp, and substitute and then compare coefficients so we are going to do all three at a go let me rewrite my equation now don't forget your 
differential equation was given as this ax equal to the gt so I have to differentiate the xp and substitute here so what is my xp xp was given as a1 a2 t and then the other part b1 b2 how many times do I want to differentiate this the system of equation is in the first order right from here it is the first order it's like saying y prime but in this case we are using x1 and x2 it means I have to differentiate it just once and substitute to the first derivative if I differentiate this I will simply get a1 and a2 respect to t the t goes away and this will give me zero because this is a constant if you differentiate a constant, you get zero. If you integrate a constant, you get a constant times the differential variable. But here's zero. So I have equation one, equation two. I substitute into equation star. Now you know why we differentiate just once? Because the highest derivative in the equation is one. So let's do the substitution here. Wherever I see x prime, it is equation 2. So I have it as a1, a2, minus my matrix A. I hope I didn't forget my matrix A. Let me see if I can capture that. It is 1, 2, 2, 1. Okay. 1, 2, 2, 1. Times my own nose. Now x is equation 1. Let me take that again. We are doing a substitution. It means this, let me change the pen. This new equation becomes x prime p minus a x p is equal to g. Let me help you doubt in that way. So you can easily do that substitution. So x p is of two forms. I have a1, a2 times t b1 b2 is equal to the gt that is 3t and then 2 that's a substitution what do i do i do some expansions i can easily compare if you think i can easily compare from this state that is good but i want to do the expansion first so if i'm expanding this one's maintained this i can have it as this let me do step by step because i can easily do this expansion this is the same as a1 t plus b1 a2 t plus b2 equated to my right hand side so now we can do the expansion so this maintains minus this is a this two by two this 2 by 2 matrix and this is 1 2 by 1 it is a vector a column vector row 1 row 2 but the column is 1 because of addition here but here is column 1 column 2 row 1 row 2 if I'm multiplying 2 by 2 by 2 by 1 what do you think I'm going to get this inner are equal it means I expect 2 by 1 matrix. That is 2 rows, 1 column. So let's see what we are going to do. I take this and multiply by the entire column. This matrix multiplication. So assuming I have 1, 2, 2, 1. Multiplying 3 and 1. This is what you are actually doing. What do you do? You take the entire row, multiply by the entire column. So I'm going to get a1t plus b1 multiplying the 1 plus the 2 would multiply the second let me write this things very well so I have 1 multiplying a1t plus b1 I have 2 multiplying the a2t plus b2 I get a second row. I'll have 2 multiplying a1t plus b1. 
and I have one multiplying a to t plus b two. Be careful with the subscripts of the a ones and a twos. If you don't take care, you would end up messing up the entire expressions. So let me maintain the colors here. So this is 3t and then 2. This is a1, a2. And I can still further do some um, expansions here. I'm going to get the same thing, a1, a2. And because I'm taking it step by step, so it seems very long, but it is not. So I'm saying right from this, if you can simply do your grouping, that is good. But I would like to do this expansion step by step. I'm going to get a1, t. B1. I'm expanding now. Alright. Mm -hmm. That's A2T plus B2 is equal to my right hand side. Then I'm, I can group like terms and compare. You realize that there are some constants. This is a vector. This is 2 by 1. Subtracting this is also 2 by 1. The additions makes them a same a single what entity. So two by one subtracting two by one. I'm supposed to get two by one. Now there are some constants in here. This is a constant. This is also a constant. This is a constant, and then that it means those without t. This is also a constant. This is a constant. So I can group those ones, and when I'm done, I can take those with t's. So, no. I can take those with T's. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and compare them to this one. So, let me do that. Let me use a red for the constants. So, it means I'm going to get A1. Don't forget a minus sign. So, if I'm taking the constants out, they are going to take the negative signs. One is B1, one is 2B2. Two two. Then A2, taking 2B1, and then B2. This is one of the groupings. Plus, I'd use blue for the, if I bring T out, I can have A1, taking 2A2. Two two. I can have the second part here, taking A2, is equal to my right hand side now I can easily compare compare coefficients here I would have to compare these ones to what I'm going to compare the T's also I hope I'm doing this then. This is one. Alright, so this is what I'm talking about. If you don't take care, you mess up. To what? I realize there's a T here and there's a T here. These are constant. This means if I'm comparing to constant, it's as if it's a zero here and then a two here. If I'm comparing this to the T aspect of the of this thing, I'm going to get three and then zero here. Because here is with T. T goes with 3T. And the constant, it means there's nothing here, and then 2. So it's as if I've broken this one down into some 0, 2 plus some T, 3, 0. I can break this down in this way. And that is what I have been able to compare with. When you get here, you know what to do. We are solving for the unknowns. You have to solve for what is A1, what is A2, what is A3, no, we don't have A3, what is B1, and then B2, what are these? And this is like solving um, a simple equation. There are four equations you are solving here. So equation one is A1 equal to zero. This is first equation. You have the second one. 
the second equation the third one and then the last one there are four equations to solve for the unknowns and you can easily do that let me see if I can help you with one if I'm taking equation 3 from equation 3 from equation 3 I realize that a1 is 3 minus 2a2 and I can substitute this into equation 4 to give me 2 times 3 plus a2 equal to 0. If I expand I get 6 minus 4a2 plus a2 equal to 0. Okay. So I hope my substitutions are correct. <laughs> then what do I have here? You realize that this and that is going to give me minus 3a2 equal to 0. And so 3a2 is equal to 6. Hence a2 is just 2. I found one of the um, variables. If a2 is that, then I can simply find a1, which was 3 minus 2 times 2. That will be negative 1 from this. I found the other. So you can go ahead and find for B1. So I had A1 to be negative 1. A2 is 2. B1, you are supposed to get from what I solved. You are supposed to get negative 3. And then B2 is supposed to give you 2. Then I can now simply say, what is my XB? It is negative 1, 2 of T plus negative 3, negative no, 2. I'm done with the solution. So my entire solution becomes what I had for the XC plus what I had for the XP. That was C1, 1, 1. What did I have for this? Negative 1, 1. this is the entire solution i know it's been um, a long stretch solving it but that is as simple as it can be so you don't forget your approaches especially um i think what i did initially up here yeah the steps so you find your complementary solution you find your yc you find your guess and then you just differentiate, substitute, and then compare coefficients. It's the same approach as we did with the higher order, but now we are looking at systems. So kindly take your time and go over this video, and then you can solve any other examples using the method of undetermined coefficients. I hope it has been worth it. The next example, I'm going to take variation of parameters on systems of equations.